Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It's Wednesday, September 4th, 2013. I'm Gigi Arnetta. Here's tonight's top stories. Tonight, Obama says the red line in Syria is not his. Plus, liberals are starting to reject Obama's case for Syrian strikes. And David Knight sits down with a documentary filmmaker exposing government overreach into the inhumane destruction of wild horses. All this and more on the InfoWars Nightly News. So Obama can't decide if it is his red line or not. Uh, we have communicated in no uncertain terms with every player in the region that that's a red line for us. I didn't set a red line. The world set a red line. So it's not his red line, it's the world's red line. In Sweden, Obama laid out his rationale for wanting to attack Syria. On the same day, a Senate committee will vote on a proposed resolution authorizing limited U.S. military strikes. He also insisted he had the authority to order attacks, expected to be cruise missile strikes on Syrian military command targets, even if Congress rejects his request for authorization. And the liberals don't believe Obama or Kerry. They're completely against this strike. President Obama's liberal activist base is adamantly opposed to military strikes in Syria. According to a new survey, the Progressive Change Campaign Committee, known as PCCC, released Wednesday. They say that more than 57,000 of its activists weighed in, and 73% of them opposed the U.S. taking action in Syria. So the liberals, they don't believe Obama and Kerry. They think they're lying. And they're not alone, because so does Putin. Vladimir Putin thinks he's lying, and he said today, they are lying, of course, in an ugly way. I watch the debates in Congress. A congressman asks Mr. Kerry, is al-Qaeda there? He says, no, we are telling you responsibly that they are not. They, the U.S., know this, that al-Nusra, a branch of al-Qaeda, is currently fighting in Syria. It was very unpleasant and surprising for me. We talk to them and assume they are decent people. But he is lying, and he knows he's lying. It's sad. The U.S. Senate is, in essence, in the process of legitimizing aggression. And also from Russia, they say that the chemical weapons are actually made by rebels. In a new breaking report released by the Russian Foreign Ministry, it has now been announced that the March 19th chemical weapons responsible for the attacks in Syria and blamed on Assad's government are linked up to rebel-made weaponry. The report from Russia's RT reads, probes from Khan al-Assal show chemicals used in March 19th's attack did not belong to standard Syrian army ammunition, and that the shell carrying the substance was similar to those made by a rebel fighter group, the Russian foreign ministry stated. The report goes on to mention that the way is being paved for military action. And yesterday, a high-level source confirmed that nuclear warheads were being transported. They actually left Abilene from Dias Air Force Base and were headed to the place in South Carolina, an undisclosed location. The brief report from the top-level military source, which was written in a rush to get the information out, reads, Dias is beginning to move out nuclear warheads today. I got a tap from Dermo earlier. He said it was the first time they have even acknowledged since being put there in the 1980s. No signature was required for the transfer, there was no directive, and he said the Dias commander was on site to give authority to release. No one knew where they were going, really. But the truck driver said to take them to South Carolina, and another pickup will take them from there. This leak inside the military industrial complex comes after prior sources have also revealed to us that B-1s and B-2 bombers were ordered to head out of their prospective bases. To learn more about the nuclear warhead transfer, you can go to InfoWars.com and see the full report. Now, Syria could be the proving ground for cyber warriors in the U.S. Experts say President Obama is unlikely to order the kind of standalone cyber attack against Syria that the United States launched against Iran's nuclear facilities a few years ago. Syria's air defenses would likely be among the first targets of any cyber attack. The experts said that U.S. forces could trick the country's radar system into seeing nothing as American jets passed overhead or disrupt Syrian missile sites designed to shoot down U.S. aircraft. 
any cyber attack would be relatively difficult to detect, said James Lewis, a cybersecurity scholar at the Center for Strategic and International Studies. The best attacks would be the ones where the Syrians never noticed they were being interfered with. And Obama plans to make a pit stop. Yes, he's going to make a stop in Russia for the LGBT activists. Yes, during the G20, he is going to find some time to meet with them. The LGBT, as you might know, is the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender rights activist. Nobody is more offended than me by some of the anti-gay and lesbian legislation that you've been seeing in Russia, Obama said last month. So before the G20 summit, Obama canceled a scheduled meeting with Putin. So Obama knows how to make friends. So he's going to go to Russia and tell them how to do it. We are on the edge of World War III. Is this really an important stop, Mr. President? Now you can watch Alex Jones live at Infowars.com forward slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. You can also browse the network, the Infowars Nightly News, and over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place. You can watch the Alex Jones Radio Show live as it happened. So check it out, Infowars.com forward slash show.